Are you lonely? Do you long for human affection? But whenever you try and talk to a woman, they laugh at you. Well, me too. But I have a solution. I am going to create a VR game that will perfectly simulate the experience of actually going on a date in the real world. So I set up a VR project in Unity and I got to work. I started by making a small room that the game will take place in. I made a table and a chair that your date will sit in. But this is where I ran into my first major issue. And I want to see if you can guess what it is. I don't have anyone to date. I have an empty chair. And that's it. So I grabbed a character from my previous game and I turned them into the most beautiful date you have ever... Uh, Okay, no, uh, they're pretty ugly, but no offense to any Polygon people that are watching. Anyway, I need to give this character a name because I need to be able to call them something. It would be a little awkward to have a conversation with someone and not use their name. So my last character was named Gunk, so I'm gonna try and be creative and come up with some- Gunkle. Perfect. Then I used the website Mixamo to automatically rig Gunkle, which is nice because I have no idea how to actually rig a character. Like I would not be able to make any games without this website. After rigging Gunkle, I downloaded a sit animation on Mixamo so that Gunkle isn't just standing in the chair. So now I've got a date and I mean, I guess that means the game is done, right? So, um, uh, uh, tax season's coming up. The only problem is that the game, it's not very realistic and not just because Gunkle can't respond to my expert conversation skills. What if your date gets thirsty or hungry or what if they just want a gift? This game needs to be a perfect simulation of a real world date. So these are things I need to account for and add a solution for in the game. But I still need to figure out how to show when Gunkle is thirsty or hungry or just wants something. I was going through a few different ideas before I decided to use a speech bubble, mostly because it's the simplest idea. The speech bubble will appear next to Gunkle and it'll have a drawing of which item Gunkle wants. So I opened Photoshop and I started creating a graphic for when Gunkle wants a glass of water, a flower, or some cheese. Um, cheese because it's it's the most romantic food, I think. I also made a script that would randomly choose one of the graphics to show. And when you see the graphic show up, you'll need to pick up the corresponding item and put it on the table in front of Gunkle. To test this, I made a cup, flour, and cheese model. And I know what you're thinking, okay? But these are just temporary models. Uh, I'll replace them later, probably. So now that I've got the basic mechanic working, I need to make ways for the player to get these items because it seems too easy just to just to pick them up. So in Blender, I modeled a simple kitchen set. I made a fridge where the cheese will be and I made a sink where you can fill up a cup of water. And for the flour, I just copy and pasted the table and I stretched it out. I ran out of interesting ideas at this point. I also made sure that the items would respawn after you give them to Gunkle so that you could actually, you know, play the game. And then I started modeling the items. I also modeled some scissors and they're what you use to get the flour from the flower pot. And then the cup is on the kitchen counter and you can fill it up in the sink. And the cheese is in the fridge, which after a decent amount of work, you can open. I also thought it would be nice if you could give Gunkle a present, which would randomly be delivered to the house. So I made a front door to the house that currently just leads to the void. And to fix that, I just added a street that you might recognize if you saw my last video. And if you haven't, you're missing out, okay? I'll link it at the end of this video so you better go watch it. And then now a present will randomly be delivered to the house that you can give to Gunkle. But at this point, you might be wondering, why do you need to give Gunkle all of these items? Well, uh, because she asked, okay? A happy wife is a happy life. And also because this happens. And I'm sorry for scaring you like that, okay? I know there aren't many jump scares I can get like that one, but it's a one-time thing, I promise. So if you don't keep Gunkle happy by constantly giving her the item she wants, uh, she will murder you. And right now, Gunk will just keep asking for items infinitely, so eventually you will always lose, which means there's pretty much no way to not be murdered. So to actually make the game winnable, I made a clock that will count up the hours as you play. It'll start at 12, and once it hits six, you win. And this is a new mechanic that I created, okay? I did not take this from another very popular game franchise. So when the clock hits 6 a.m., you'll hear a knock at the door, and then when you open the door, you win! Also, I'm not sure if you noticed or not, but I spent some time improving the graphics of the game and now I just realized how bad it looked before. It looked horrible. Oh my god. But anyways, right now the game isn't too hard. All you need to do is give Gunkle our items until the clock hits 6am. But Gunkle isn't the only thing you need to worry about. Gunk is outside and he's looking for a way in. And if he gets in... Sorry again for that terrifying moment. But you might be wondering why Gunk is trying to get inside. Uh, well... Basically, just don't let him in. It's not good. But anyway, Gunk is trying to get inside the house. The first way he can get in is through the front door. When Gunk is at the door, you'll hear a knock on the door, the same one that plays when a present is delivered. If you don't get to the door in time, Gunk will get inside. And if you get to the door and open it for too long, he'll also get inside. You need to open the door and see Gunk and then shut the door until he goes away. For the second way he can get inside, I thought about having a window that Gunk will appear through. I'm not exactly sure how you get rid of him once he's at the window, but I mean, I'm sure I'll figure that one out. So I made a window in Blender and I put it in the side of the main room. After that, I started working on a new room that the window looks into. I mean, I guess a hallway, depending on how you look at it. Okay, no, no, it's definitely a hallway. So I added a door that connects the hallway to the main room, but I don't actually want the player to be able to go in here, which doesn't really make sense. Okay, but hear me out. It wouldn't make sense to have a hallway that leads to a dead end. So I added the door to make the room feel like connected. To stop the player from getting out into the hallway, I can add some objects to block the path. So to do that, I made a shelf and a crate and blender. Then I placed them in front of the hallway door. So there you go. Okay, everything makes sense. So the room is, sorry, 
The hallway is completed. Now I just need to work on getting Gunk to spawn. Getting Gunk to spawn at the door was pretty simple. Every second, there is a set chance that he can spawn as long as the door is shut. But when Gunk is at the hallway, I want him to start at the back and slowly make his way towards the window, which is just a little bit more complicated. What I ended up doing was creating a game object for each position I wanted Gunk to be at. Then every second, Gunk has a random chance to teleport to the next position until he reaches the window. And when he reaches the window, Okay, I'm sorry. That was the last time, okay? I promise. But right now, you still can't get rid of Gunk when he's in the hallway. And I've been thinking for a while about how you would exactly do that. And I have an idea that I think would work. I can put shutters on either side of the window. And then when you close both of the shutters, that will make Gunk leave. And that's the idea I'm gonna go with. And I told you I would figure it out eventually. So I modeled the shutters in Blender and then I added them to the sides of the window. And by using what I learned when making the fridge door, which worked great, I can open and close the shutters. And everything is working perfectly. Well, no, not perfectly. There is a big issue with using the shutters. For everything to work well, the shutters need to stay open. Otherwise, you could keep the shutters closed and Gunk would automatically disappear, which is an issue. You might think that solving this would be pretty simple. Yeah, probably. But I decided to do the most complicated thing possible. I wanted to make the shutters automatically close when you're not using them. And to do that, I need to learn one of the scariest things in Unity, quaternions. If you don't know what a quaternion is, uh, you're not alone. I don't know either, which is why this was so complicated. But after a good few days of work, I got it working. And so that's the second way Gunk can get inside. I want to add one last way that Gunk can get inside. But at this point, I wasn't too sure what to do. The way you counter Gunk at both of the current places he can get in is basically just by closing a door in front of him. So for this third way, I want to come up with something a little bit more creative. And I did. Or I mean, at least as creative as I can get. I added a new backyard area to the game. And because it's really dark outside, I made a flashlight and I put it on a table outside. And it's important to see into the backyard because you never know what might be lurking out there. Gunk is lurking out there. Gunk can randomly show up in the backyard. And to get rid of him, you need to shine your flashlight on him. Basically how this works is that the flashlight casts out a ray. And when the ray hits Gunk, it'll start a timer. And when that timer is up, Gunk will disappear. But if you move the ray off of Gunk before the timer finishes, the timer gets reset. The only issue with this is that the ray is only like one pixel wide. So you really have to make sure that the center of the flashlight is on Gunk or it, I mean, it just won't work. Anyway, Gunk will make his way through the backyard the same way that he will in the hallway. But eventually he'll make it to the window. And when he does, it's all over. There's nothing you can do at that point. The door shuts and you can't open it. All you you can do is stare into Gunk's eyes, waiting for him to attack. Okay, I mean, you really should have seen that one coming. That one's not on me. So at this point, the game is pretty much done, but there is still one small little problem. I haven't actually tested if the game works or not. So that could be really bad and it gets worse. Bone Labs, one of the most anticipated VR games ever is being released in a week. And if I release my game after Bone Labs, I mean, it's over. They'll take the spotlight and no one will even know that my game exists. So I need to be quick and I need to make sure that my game isn't released after Bone Labs. So I started testing and oh my God, there are so many bugs. The game is pretty much just broken. It's unplayable in its current state. So I did some bug fixing and I tested it again, still broken. I did some more bug fixing, still broken. And at this point, it was only a few days before Bone Labs released and my game was still broken, but I kept going. I kept testing and bug fixing all day, every day. And finally, the game works. I actually did it. Everything is fixed and works perfectly, except for the front door. I tried to make it auto close like the shutters, but it definitely does not work properly. But I'm okay just forgetting about that one. We can just leave that. The other thing I noticed while playtesting is that the game is extremely hard. Like so hard, I haven't been able to beat it. It's possible that the ending just doesn't even work because I haven't even been able to make it that far yet to test it. And it's pretty much just because everything in the game is RNG and Gunkle gets angry really fast. You might consider these to be issues, but I would consider them to be features. Mostly because it's the day before Bone Labs release date and I don't have time to fine tune the difficulty. So the game will stay impossible. If you do beat the game though, please leave a comment and let me know. There's a link in the description description to the game, so go give it a try. I don't think it's possible to beat it. I don't think anyone can. But now, the important question. Did I release the game before Bone Labs? Um, kind of. I ended up publishing the game about five or six hours after the launch of Bone Labs, but I still published it on the same day. So I mean, technically you can see that as both games being released at the same time. That's how I see it, which is a win in my books. I'll take it. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. By the time this video is out, I've already started working on another game and I have some big ideas for it. So make sure you're subscribed so that you don't miss out on it. I'll see you in the next one.